Uh, thank you guys for being here. Um, I know this is the last session of the day, so you're probably exhausted. I am too. Um, but I'm really happy also because this is the first time for me to speak at PG Europe, and this is even more special for me because I'm going to be able to speak about the two things I love the most in the world, Postgres and Pokemon. And this is also going to be a talk about AI. So clearly, AI, Pokemon, and Postgres, this is something that is going to be really fun. Uh, quick presentation about me. My name is Matt. I'm a solution architect working for Ivan. Um, Ivan, for those who don't know, uh, uh, this is a company offering 11 open source technologies, database open source technology, fully managed in the public cloud of your choice. We have a booth if you want to uh, have fun with us. Check it out. Uh, about me, well, uh, spoiler, I just already told you, but I'm a huge fan of Pokemon, but you already guessed that. And I'm also a huge fan of Postgres. I've been working in the Postgres field like forever. I'm not that old, but forever is the right term. Uh, quick disclaimer, uh, this is a visual presentation, so I'm going to show Pokemon cards, right? Uh, obviously, I'm not working for Pokemon, so Nintendo, if you're watching, do not sue me because I do not own the Pokemon card, but I'm using those as an example for uh, the talk. Before we jump into the presentation, I wanted to add a context of why this talk and why we are talking about Postgres, AI, and Pokemon. And uh, this is going to be a very personal talk, so please be nice with me. Uh, what's the problem I'm trying to solve? Well. I was telling you that I'm a huge fan of Pokemon, that's right, but this is quite kind of a, a euphemism. I'm a very huge fan of Pokemon, and I've been collecting Pokemon cards like forever again. And my house is just like this, with Pokemon cards everywhere. Every single room in my house, there is Pokemon cards, right? Even in the toilets, you can find Pokemon cards. This is a very big problem. And to understand the the big thing is that I've been using, I've been uh, liking Pokemon since forever. And as you can see on the back, they are Pokemon things. And I was like, it was like 20 years ago. So you understand I have a big problem here and I have many Pokemon cards everywhere in, uh, in the house. So I need to do something. So me and my wife came up with two options. The first one would be easy. And actually the talk we just finished and let's go. It would be just to burn everything and move forward with our life. I mean, this is something I really <laughs> consider because I had too many Pokemon cards everywhere, so this would be the easiest solution. But obviously, there was another solution, which is uh, sorting Pokemon cards. And I put there uh, 10,000 cards, but honestly, I think this is way, way, way more. Um, so I decided anywhere to choose a second solution, obviously. Um, but now the question is, how are we going to do that? Uh, obviously, not by hand, because this is going to be too much uh, a trouble. And as everybody here, we are working in Haiti, so there is definitely something we could do. So we're going to use technology. And to understand correctly the problem we are trying to solve here, I wanted to uh, um, put it in other words. And sorting 10,000 cards, in reality, that means that we need to find separately 10,000 different cards. So that means for each single card, I need to identify this card, find the relative in information about it, and then gather those information and put it on eBay or other marketplace, for example. And if we change again the words, the real problem we're trying to solve is how do I find a single Pokemon card inside a database full of all the existing cards, right? And when you put it that way, this is definitely a problem that Postgres and technology can solve. There is database, there is find, there is single, definitely something Postgres can do. But before we need uh, before we move forward, we need to identify what is a Pokemon card, okay? A Pokemon card, this is my favorite Pikachu one, uh, it's a few things. The first thing, it's a name. So this one is Pikachu, simple. The second thing, it's a beautiful picture. It's a unique picture for this specific card. Next, we have the action text. Action text are just things you can use to uh, play the game. And the last thing 
important thing, I mean, is the extension logo and number. This is the uh, Pokemon card that are released like every three months, and every three months there is a new extension, and this is how it's uh, represented on the card, and the number is the number of the card inside this extension. All right, so let's see with all those information if we can come up with something to identify a unique card. First option, the card name. So I mentioned that there is a Pikachu card, okay? That's obvious, but as you probably already guessed, this is not the only Pikachu card. There have been many, many, many Pokemon cards, and obviously in those, many, many Pikachu cards. So the name, not a good option. Second option, action text. Action text, as I was mentioning, this is the thing below the, uh, the image, and clearly, you can see easily that those two cards are very different. Uh, this is something everybody in the, in the room can be, uh, is able to do, but if you look at the um, uh, action text, those are exactly the same. So we cannot use the action text uh, as a differentiator to find a unique card. And if we look again at the, uh, the name, again, those are the same, even though the cards are different, so not a good solution. But something that is different on those two cards is the extension. So maybe this is something we could uh, look at. So third option, extension logo and number. Look at those two cards, those are again very different cards, so sounds good, but the problem is the extension logo and number are not located on the same place. So this might be tricky if we are building something to detect the extension logo and number. This might come as a tricky part. But let's say we, we make it work, we, we, need, we, we are able to find where the extension logo, if it's on the left, it's on the right. Let's say we make it happen. Uh, another problem that could arise is that this is a digital representation of a Pokemon card, okay? Uh, so it's easy when you zoom, you can see clearly all the details, that's fine. But in real life, we're gonna take pictures of cards, or we're gonna throw pictures, uh, Pokemon card in front of a webcam. And Obviously, this, this won't have the same quality as a digital image. So, for example, on this particular picture I took of the Pokemon card, you cannot see the extension logo. So, again, that's a problem. Another problem about this is if I'm going to show Pokemon cards on my webcam, probably I'm going to put my fans on it. So, not a good solution. So card name, not a, good, not a good one, action text, not a good one, extension logo, again, not good. So what do we have left? Left is the unique picture. And this is what we're going to have to search. So just remember, the, the goal here is to find, using something, the uniqueness of a, a Pokemon card. So we're going to use the picture. Very high level, what we're going to have to build, we're going to have an application user that is going to take uh, pictures, or is going to throw a, a Pokemon card in front of a webcam. Then we're going to have to build a representation of the image. This is the interesting part. Uh, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about vectors. We're then going to have to saw this mathematical representation of the image inside a database. Uh, for all the cards that ever existed. And the last part is using Postgres, well, to uh, find the best card comparing the vector we just generated and gather all the information of the card we are looking for. Okay, so this is a three-step plan. We're going to go through all the steps. Uh, obviously, the first one is not going to be related to Postgres. It's going to be related to AI, but the rest is going to be AI and Postgres, so stay tuned. Uh, first part, so uh, the first thing we had to do is to find a card inside an image, okay? So let's say I'm in front of my Wacom and I'm showing a Pokemon card. What I want to do is to find where is the Pokemon card because if I want to generate a representation of the picture, I need a picture of the card, right? I don't want to uh, generate a representation of my uh, face. So this is high level what you need to do in this part. And before we uh, continue, I wanted to, uh, well, settle on the lexical part because AI is used like in every single topic lately. So maybe we should just uh, be aware of what it is really. Um, and who better to give us the definition of AI than ChatGPT? So ChatGPT is telling us that AI involves creating computer systems that can perform tasks requiring human-like intelligence. 
Yeah, that's fine. This is, a, this is a little bit generic, and this is why everybody is talking about AI, because this is mostly automating things using computers, so it's IT, pretty much. Uh, but what's interesting is that inside AI, there's something called machine learning, so this is a subset of AI, and the definition is a little bit more precise. So again, this is a subset of AI that enables computer to learn and improve from experience. So this is very different from uh, IT in general, because uh, unlike uh, responding to events or algorithm or things like that, we're going to build something that is going to learn from data and then be able to do something else. And inside machine learning, there is many other categories of uh, machine learning types. And this is the one we're going to use. This is object detection. Again, this is really easy to understand. A computer vision task that involves identifying and locating objects inside image and video. So this is exactly what we want to do. What we want to do. Uh, other than object detection, uh, there are many other categories of uh, machine learning uh, things. Uh, the, the one everybody is talking about currently is uh, LLM, Large Language Model. Uh, it's also related to NLP, Natural Language Processing, that is able to, um, from text, gather information. So, for example, feelings or topics or category or whatever. Uh, there is also speech recognition, like Google Home or Siri, anomaly detection, well, many, 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 many other uh, categories of machine learning, but today we're going to focus on object detection. So how does it work and how do we build a machine learning model uh, to detect Pokemon cards? Well, the first step, which is this every, uh, uh, every time you need to build a new machine learning, this is the first step you're going to have to do every time. Um, the first thing we're going to do is to generate the data. So generate the data or gather the data. For this particular use case, we're going to generate Pokemon card pictures. All right. So as I was saying, I have many different Pokemon cards. So I decided to take pictures of many different cards in many different uh, locations with many different parameters, such as the light, such as the orientation, such as many different things. And with this data, uh, I needed to then build what we call a data set. A data set is something a little bit different because from the pictures, we're going to add some data to explain what we are looking for. And to do that, we're going to use a tool called Label Studio. So everything I've been working uh, for this application is fully open source and fully free. So if you want to have fun like me, this is completely possible right after the talk. So Label Studio is a tool that is enabling us to, um, from pictures, create a data set for machine learning in a good format. So let's say, for example, I have these pictures. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do with the tool is to uh, draw what we call a bounding box. A bounding box is just the location inside the picture that of the thing we are touching. So in our use case, uh, a Pokemon card. The second thing we're going to have to do is to select a label. The label is just a definition of the thing we are looking for and that we just put the bounding box on it. So for this instance, this is a card. After we have been doing this for all the single cards I took picture of, it was like hundreds, uh, I generated a JSON um, uh, that has the, the, the following format. So it just had the name and the, uh, the, the card I, I was uh, using. Then it uh, specified the label and then the bonding box uh, coordinates. So this is where the bonding box is uh, exactly inside the image, right? So this is pretty simple. So now we have the data, we have the data set. We're going to have to build the model. And the first step is training. So you have two choices when you are building a machine learning model. The first one is to build from everything from scratch. So this is something you can do, but this is time consuming, and you need a lot of expertise in machine learning. And the second thing you can do is to take a machine learning model that already exists and tune it for what you want to achieve. And this is obviously what we're going to do here. And we're going to use something called the Hugging Face. If you've not heard about Hugging Face yet, this is a company offering 
a thing like a GitHub for machine learning. So on a Hugging Face, you can put a data set, but also machine learning models that are open source and then can be used for, uh, by anybody. So for our specific use case, we're going to use a machine learning already existing that is, uh, has been de developed by Facebook. Uh, it's called DETR ResNet 50. So it's a machine learning model that has been trained on ImageNate uh, data set. So it has thousands and thousands of images. And this model is already capable of uh, identifying uh, animals, cars, uh, humans, and things like that. But not yet Pokemon cars. So this is why we needed to do that. So we are taking the data set we just built, we are putting it on Hugging Face, and then we're going to train it with the data set we just generated, right? And the result of this is a new machine learning, sorry, up. Ah, blow the animation. Boom. And the result is a new machine learning model that is now capable of identifying giraffe, but also Pokemon cards. The last step when you are building a machine learning model is validating the data. This is something very important because you've been training something to detect something, but you need to be sure that it's detecting the something, right? And when I was telling about collecting data, the data you've been collecting, you're not only using it for training, but also uh, for the test. So let's say you have 100 pictures, you're going to use 80 of those pictures for the training and 20 for the test. This is very important to not use the same data because if you do that, you're going to incur a bias into the machine learning model and this is something you do not want. And voila, uh, we have now a machine learning model so it can take an in as an input a picture uh, with a Pokemon card in it and easily can detect where is the Pokemon card, all right? So first step, done. Second step, this is where Postgres comes in. Uh, we're going to have to generate a mathematical representation of this card. So again, very high level. What we're going to have to do is to download every single Pokemon card that ever existed, generate this representation. We mentioned vectors at the beginning. And then we're going to put that into Postgres. But how are we going to do that starting from a picture? So this is a squirtle pictures of a Pokemon card, right? But how do we go from this to this? And what is this exactly? Well, to understand that, we need to understand what's a picture. So if we zoom a little bit on this one, again and again, this is probably no surprise to anyone in this room, but a picture is just a puzzle, an assemble of pixels. Right? Simple. Uh, for example, this particular uh, Pokemon card is almost a million of pixels. And what's a pixel? Pretty simple again. It's a combi combination of a red value, a green value, and a blue value. Right? right? Pretty simple. This is uh, something we learn when we are very young. And uh, this is basically the most simple definition of an image. But if we look at uh, our image, so a Pokemon card is almost a million of pixels, but if we took a random picture of uh, french fries uh, with a pretty good resolution, it's already 6.2 million pixels, right? And this is just french fries. So if we wanted to do some the same thing for uh, planets or stars or whatever, this would be many, many more pixels. So storing pixels inside Postgres might work. This could be possible, but this won't scale definitely. And it would be very difficult to manipulate, to handle, to compare and everything. So people had to come up with something else. And this something else is called an embedding. You probably already heard about it, but now you might want to understand what it is. What is it con concretely? And an embedding, and I, had, I, I, I put a lot of work in, in finding the right words for it, because embedding is quite an obscure uh, definition. So this is the definition I love. Uh, vec it's a vector representation of data that captures the essential features of the data. So if we look at 
pictures, for example, what's a feature of a picture? Well, this is the ages, this is the shapes, this is the patterns, this is the textures, this is the colors. And uh, instead of just keeping the pixels, every pixel of a single car, we're just gonna find the uh, major features of the car and we're gonna extract this and create what we call an embedding. Uh, our embedding are calculated. Again, this is going to be uh, using machine learning. And machine learning that are generating embedding are using what we call CNN, Convolutional Neuronal Network. That's a lot of L, especially for a French-speaking guy. Um, as you can see, it's a visual representation of a CNN. What's, what concretely is doing, I'm not going to go into all of the details, but basically, and very high level, uh, for each color, so red, blue, green, is going to take the picture, send it to what's called a neuron. A neuron is just a picture that takes something and that and outputs something else. So, for example, it's going to take the red, it's going to remove, I don't know, the black, and send it to the second neuron. And the, neuron, the second neuron is going to do something else. And from the end of the network, the result is going to be the embedding. So this might look huge, but this is the embedding of the uh, Pokemon card we just saw, okay? So clearly this is, this looks like big. This is a, a vector of more than 700 uh, dimensions, but this is clearly better than just uh, 6 million pixels, right? So now we are, uh, we need to generate this embedding. So again, we're going to use Hugging Face that is already offering many, many different machine learning models to generate embedding. We could have built our own, but well, uh, I've already spent a, a lot of time doing the first one, so I decided to just reuse something. Uh, for this particular use case, we're going to use the Clip uh, machine learning model. This is uh, an implementation of open AI uh, embedding capabilities. And it's going to just use it to uh, generate the embedding, as simple as it is. So now we are able to generate embedding for every single Pokemon cards ever. Next step is we're going to store those into Postgres. And uh, a vector, what it is, simply it's an array of floats, right? So this is something that Postgres can definitely store, for example, using uh, the array the data type. Uh, this is something we could have done, but if we did that, we, we would have missed, for example, uh, capabilities to find the similarity between two vectors, but also indices in, the, uh, in, in this process. So we're going to use something else, and this something else is called PG vector. PG Vector is an open source extension that allows you to store but also manipulate uh, vectors. It offers two kinds of similarity search, exact and nearest. We're going to go into uh, more details later. Uh, same is it's offering three different dis distance methodology. Again, we'll see more later. And obviously, because this is a Postgres extension, it offers everything that Postgres is offering. That means uh, ACID, that means uh, joins, that means indexes, that means pointing type recovery, uh, logical replication, everything. So everything that is already working is going to work with a PG vector. And that's the beauty of it, because similarity search on vector can be can be done with other engines, definitely. But again, PG Vector is working directly on your Postgres. It's uh, easy to install, easy to use. You don't have to learn a new machine, a new engine to, uh, to do the, the similarity search. So definitely a good choice. So I was mentioning this is easy to, you to, to get started. Well, this is true. If you want to use PG Vector, the first thing you have to do is to install the extension. So obviously, if you are self-managing it, you're going to have to need the, the binaries. But uh, if you are using a managed services, well, this is just create extension vector. Uh, and this, then the second thing you're going to have to do is to create a table or add a column uh, with the new vector data type. Data type. As you can see, you can specify the number of dimension your vector is going to uh, handle. For example, this one is going to be uh, able to handle vector with two dimensions. 
and inserting, deleting, and updating data is going to be as simple as other DML queries. So it's going to be just like that. Uh, inserting vectors is just inserting an, any other type, uh, data type, the data. OK. So now we know that we can use PG vector to store vectors. So let's go back on the project. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to search for every single Pokemon card that ever existed. And obviously, this is the internet, so there is an API for it. Um, so we're going to call this API. We're going to uh, search for every single Pokemon card that ever existed. We're going to uh, send those to Hugging Face to generate the embedding. And those embedding, we're going to store those into a single table, uh, which is going to have a, a vector uh, column. And voila. I've been saying voila guide quite a lot. Um, sorry. And this is it. We now have a, a table of all the Pokemon cards that ever existed with all this, this information of the Pokemon card, but also uh, uh, an embedding column with the embedding of the specific image of the Pokemon card. So step two, we are good. Let's move on to the last part, uh, finding the best card regarding the, the card we're going to uh, take picture of. So very high level, again, what we, want, what we want to do is that now that we have been able to detect the Pokemon card from the picture, we're going to, again, generate a mathematical representation of it, an embedding. You know what it is now. And we're going to use Postgres to find the nearest vector representation uh, from all the Pokemon cards inside the database, and Postgres is going to give us the real card we are looking for. So this is the part we're going to focus on. Uh, but to explain how to compare two vectors, I wanted to show you a visual representation again of what is a vector. So I'm going to uh, show you two uh, different cards uh, that I just selected two uh, simple vectors. So this one, for example, has a two dimension. Obviously, this is just an example, but you get the point. And if we just had uh, uh, the picture of the card we are looking for, you can s clearly see, as human as we are, that the distance between those two is uh, lower, lower than this distance here. And this is exactly what we want to achieve with PG vector and similarity search. So I was mentioning that there are three different kinds of uh, distance ca calculation. The first one is called cosine similarity. So I know, I know school is pretty far away from everybody, but if we uh, look at the, those two vectors, the, the cosine uh, angle is this one. Okay, You draw a uh, uh, triangle, rectangle, rectangle, triangle. And uh, the, 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 the cosine angle is the one near the uh, hypotenuse. Right. To put it simply, we're just going to have a calculation based on the angle between those two vectors. So this is causing similarity. The second possibility is what's called L2 distance. This is the Euclidean distance. And instead of using mathematical things to to, uh, that use the angle, we're going to use the distance between two vectors. Uh, so this is pretty much the same thing, uh, but um, machine learning experts have experienced that causing distance is often better, especially if we are looking at comparing embedding that were generated for pictures because the uh, causing distance is often um, really good at, for example, skipping uh, errors just like uh, lights or uh, the size of the picture or things like that. So for this project, I'm going to use causing distance. You might want to test for your specific use case. It might depend on the embedding machine learning you are using. It might depend on the data set. It might depend on many different factors. So be sure to check. So are we going to use those distance using PG vector? Well, it, this is going to be really simple. So this is a query that is uh, requesting the five nearest Pokemon card based on the output we just generated. Uh, as you can see, there is a new operator you can use. So it's this one. Um, as you can see on the last, uh, the last part of the query, you are, you are, we are using an order by uh, comparing the distance between 
the embedding of the uh, output we just uh, created, and every single uh, embedding stored inside the database. This is how you are doing um, similarity search using PG vector. So this is for cousin distance. For Euclidean distance, it's going to be pretty much the same thing, just the operator is going to be a little bit different, but basically this is pretty much the same thing. Um, the result you're going to have uh, from the, the, the comparison between the distance cousin and L2 is the cousin is a number uh, from 0 to 1. Okay, uh, 0 means the, ve the two vectors are very, really close, and uh, 1 means not, like, not close at all. Uh, pretty much the same thing for Euclidean, but this, this time uh, it's, a, it's a number, so it's a distance, if you remember. And the closest to zero means that the closest the two vector are. And if, you, uh, if we look at real data, so this is a Pokemon card I just, picture, I just take, took a picture. And if we look at the result, for example, this one uh, is going to give us a similarity of 0 0.07, blah, blah, blah. So pretty close. And the funny thing is that if you look closely at those two pictures, you can see that the first one, so the, the real picture, is in French. But the, the, the result is in English. So this is really cool because we've been able to find a card even though the language is different. Uh, the other result, the other similar result, are also really funny because if you know Pokemon, you know that this, this little guy is just the pre-evolution of uh, the one we are looking for. So the machine learning model have been able to find the, this. This is, I mean, this is mind-blowing for me. Um, and if we look at other results, we can see that there is definitely similarity between those. Uh, for example, the color is the same, the border are the same. They are all looking in the same way, in the same direction. Uh, so it's, it's not just color, it's not just uh, shape and everything, it's also many different things. So for example, all the guys are looking at the same direction. If we look at a, a, another example, uh, so this is the Pokemon card, Pikachu card we, we were looking for at the beginning, and obviously the best result is the real Pokemon card, and the others are all Pikachu. But this was expected, but uh, this is kind of funny. Uh, the second one is a little bit tricky, uh, maybe I can show it, but uh, I think the similarity between those is especially located in the fact that this one has a blue sky with clouds, which is the same here, we have leaves, we have leaves here, so there is something. Maybe it's not obvious for us, but this is something the machine learning and the similarity have been uh, able to detect, so really amazing. Uh, so far I've been using PG vector without indices and for a reason. Uh, this is because PG vector is doing exact nearest neighbor search only if you are not using indices. What does that mean is that if you want to find the best result when you are doing similarity search, you cannot use indices because indices are using something called approximate nearest neighbor search. So this is something that you're going to have to consider when you are using PG vector. Uh, you're going to choose performance or exact uh, result. So for this specific use case, I wanted to have the best result, but maybe for other use cases, you will be just fine having the uh, OK result, but with a, 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 a better performance. So there are two kind of indices you can use on PG vector. The first one is called IVF flat. Uh, this one is splitting the vectors inside different lists. So it's going to build list of a vector, and then it's going to choose uh, a single list and find inside this list the nearest vector uh, we are looking for. So this is quite simple. It's uh, faster to build. Uh, but there is a new kind of uh, index that exists now. Uh, it has been released in the last version of PG vector, the 0 0.5 uh, version. It's called N A H N S W, which means hierarchical and something small world. Uh, basically, what's going to do is uh, create a graph uh, index. So you can picture it as a, a, a graphical index, basically. Uh, it's going to be way more better in terms of performances, but it's going to be 
much slower in the build time and also it's going to take way more uh, disk uh, to, to build, but also in the memory. So both have traders. Uh, usually other engine and Postgres are also using, using the HN uh, SW. It's kind of a standard uh, currently in the uh, vector search. So definitely good to see, uh, to see it on the PG vector. And if we look at explain plan, because uh, we love explain plan, uh, on, on this one, uh, this is an explain plan of uh, similarity search using PG vector but without uh, index. So obviously what's going to do, it's going to do a sex scan on every single card and then comparing the two vectors. So this is going to be slow, but we're going to find the best uh, result. If we, if we create an index, so for example, uh, HNSW on the uh, cause in distance, because you have to specify the distance uh, you're going to use, well, this time it's going to use the index, obvious, and it's going to be way more better to find the, uh, the, the same result, but maybe the result won't be as good as uh, the first query. So again, this is the trade-off, but you have to uh, choose the one that is more suited to your use case. All right, uh, so we have everything. We have the object detection, the Pokemon card detection. We have the mathematical representation, generation, and storage uh, inside Postgres. And then we have the similarity, similarity search using Postgres. We are ready to uh, do a quick demo. So this is me in my, uh, not bedroom, but uh, office, uh, doing a, a demo of the application. So I'm going to uh, sh show cards in front of the webcam. Uh, on the bottom, you can see the uh, object detection model. And on the right, this is Postgres returning the, uh, the, the Pokemon card. Enjoy. That's cool, right? Okay, so obviously I chose uh, an, uh, a small example where everything is working perfectly. This might not be the case every time, but usually that was that was really great. So before I leave you, uh, I just wanted to share some improvement I was thinking of uh, for this application. The first one would be detecting the language and the condition of the card because we just uh, build a machine model that is detecting the card and then finding the card, but if we want to sell the card, we need to find which language it is and uh, how, how is the condition of the card. So again, we could build something, another machine learning model that is detecting uh, things on the card, text on the card and everything, so many other things we can do. Uh, we could speed up the queries because we do not want to use index, so we need to find other things. Uh, for example, we could uh, detect the card name and then uh, build a standard uh, B3 index on the name, and then filter those results, and then just do a sex scan of the rest of the subset. This, is, this would be much more better. And the last thing we could uh, think of is uh, continuously improve the machine learning. This is something everybody is doing. So for example, ChatGPT, every time you are feeding him with data, if you are selecting the, okay, this is a good answer, then it's going to reuse this data, fill it to the machine learning, and improve it on the fly. All right? So this is definitely something we could do. We could just reuse the picture we just generated and uh, fill it to the machine learning so it can improve continuously. Uh, all right, so I've been talking about Pokemon because this is a topic I like, and I had a real-life use case for me. but. Probably you don't have this uh, use case at home, so other things you could do uh, with what we saw is, for example, product recognition and recommendation. Let's say you bought something uh, a long time ago, it broke, and you have a picture of it, and you want to find the exact same thing, but you don't remember the name or you don't remember uh, the reference of the product. Uh, well, but you just took a picture of it, and then you find the real, uh, the real thing you were looking for. So this is one of the examples you could use. We could also propose a similar product, uh, because I was looking for the exact same product, but maybe I can uh, show my customer other and similar product. That could be good for him. Uh, another use case uh, that could be used, because we've been talking about 
pictures and embeddings, but uh, I was mentioning that like, embedding can be calculated, calculating, calculated, sorry, on uh, many different things. For example, text. For example, uh, audio. So let's say, for example, we uh, we are a, a customer engineer and we are helping users to, I don't know, use use my product. Uh, let's say, for example, we have question like this, how to reset my password, but I don't want to every single time I, I'm, I'm being asked this question to just uh, find the, the right link and send it to uh, my customer. So I'm just going to build something uh, using embedding. I'm, I'm going to calculate this, uh, the embedding of this simple question, and I'm going to do similarity search on my documentation, and I'm going to return the right uh, documentation link. This is also something you can do with embedding. And that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I've left you with a QR code for uh, a free Postgres for life, so have fun for it. Uh, I've used it for, 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 this, for this application, so yeah, have fun, and thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Um. So you showed the latency of the um, like the actual query in Postgres, but like how's the latency for the other steps, like the object detection and um, ah, generating the embedding? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, during the demo, the thing that is the most costly currently is the object detection uh, part, uh, mostly because I didn't want to take thousands and thousands of pictures. So currently, the machine learning model is detecting Pokemon cards, but it can be much, much more better. But I didn't want to just uh, spend like tens of hours on this. So I just focused on the Postgres part. But there are definitely improvements in my machine learning model, so clearly. Questions? Yes, OK. You're next. Thank you for your speech. <clears throat> I have just a little um, question. Uh, I don't understand uh, why you use a CNN model. Uh, I understand that uh, you use uh, Aginface uh, to uh, represent the image uh, in vector and uh, also use the same uh, approach uh, for a recognized new image and the image of the data set. Yes. But I don't understand the, the <laughs> CNN, sorry. No, that's fine. Thank you. Um, uh, I didn't use directly CNN, but every single machine learning model is using CNN to produce the results. So for example, embedding. Uh, yes, I used a machine learning model that is already existing, but this existing machine learning model is using CNN to produce the embedding. You trade uh, and you you pass your uh, small data set uh, in uh, in Agile phase. Uh, you get uh, a new model and use that for calculate the. Yeah. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> another suggestion. Uh, mm, what about the other feature like uh, uh, the 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 card uh, like uh, the the title uh, and the other? This is uh, it's quite important, uh, m not uh, on the input, but uh, on the result. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I think that it's um, a focus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't mention it clearly, maybe, but uh, inside the database, uh, I've been building on top of the Pokemon API. Every single information is there. So if I have the pictures, I have everything else. And the API that I mentioned here, and I, I left the link in the, in the presentation, it gives everything, so details, name, extension, blah, 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 you but also the image. So you put it uh, uh, during the label studio process uh, when? No, no, no. no. I, the only thing I did is detecting the card and generating from the card a representation of the image. Okay. So whatever it's written on it, whatever the, the name, whatever the extension, everything, the embedding is focused on everything. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, I have just one uh, question. Uh, the number of dimensions of the generated embedding is uh, given by the model you used, or 
exactly. or some configuration or yes uh, the number of dimension is determined by the machine learning model so for example the open ai embedding machine learning model that is generating embedding is using 768 dimensions this is uh, 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 i've list a link against uh, you cannot see it sorry uh, I've left the link of the uh, GitHub project of the OpenAI Clip model. It explains everything and why 768. It's basically a, a trade-off between uh, performance, size of the embedding, and uh, features that have been extracted inside the embedding. So, kind of a balance. In terms of scalability, because you discuss about 10,000 cards, but when you're going to have millions of cards, are you probably going to need table partitioning or something like that? Do you have any idea about how to partition this type of data? Uh, using vectors, you mean? But I mean, any guys yeah. like a... Yeah, uh, that's why during the uh, last slide I was um, proposing improvement by uh, filtering the data before uh, the vectors uh, comparison, because if you are focusing only on vectors and you want the exact result, you cannot use anything else than um, um, just sec sequential scan. So the only thing you can do for now to improve the similarity search is to filter on other things and then to just do a sex scan on the sub subset of data you just filtered. Um, is there any extension for um, actually delivering the load of embedding to the Postgres, something like a worker process mm. or something that we put the image in a table and get some embedding uh, and then get rid of that image? Not yet, oh. but maybe someday, someday, probably, because Postgres is capable of everything, so maybe someday we'll see extension inside Postgres that are able to generate embedding. We'll see. Well, great presentation, first of all. Um, for your question, I will have a session tomorrow that touches a little bit it, so it's tomorrow. I don't want to spoil too much, but there are potential ways to do part of it in Postgres. Um, the thing that you said correctly, and I believe it's worth focusing, is you are just using a capability of uh, calculating embeddings on the image, but I feel that machine learning is kind of plug and play. Mm -hmm. So you could generate a separate model that detects the text, and then you can achieve the partitioning, uh, or you can achieve a much better filtering based on the text, and then only uh, check the embeddings that have the same Pikachu name, for example. Yep. I believe, again, it's the mix of machine learning and the capability of the database that makes this really successful and really important. Yeah, that's a great point. And, uh, this is exactly why PG vectors we are full on Postgres because you can benefit from all the features of Postgres plus a vector uh, capability, database, database capability. Okay, thank you so much. We are out of time, but before, well, okay, applause, round of applause. <laughs> thank you.